Hello, how are you doing? I was just reading through the Times newspaper and I saw that they have published their best books of the year list and the editors have picked a really interesting mixture of some books that have been appearing on lots of these lists and other books which I wasn't even aware of and it's why I love looking through so many of these because I discover some titles which I just haven't come across before. So I thought it'd be fun to go through and discuss all of the books that they have picked whether I've read them, whether I've not read them and want to read them, or whether I don't want to read them. And I'd love to know uh, what you think of any of these books in the comments below. Also, they, they note that uh, it's a really great year for Irish fiction. Um, so they even like headline it um, saying, dysfunctional Irish families, we love them. <laughs> so um, then the very first novel I'm going to talk about uh, is by an Irish author, Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy, which has appeared on a number of lists now. And this is a story of a woman who has just given birth to a child and is feeling this big mixture of emotions of uh, severe depression um, about uh, the, the limitations um, having a family is causing in her life uh, and her um, thwarted ambition, uh, but also her profuse love um, for this new child. And I have been wanting to read this, but I was slightly hesitant to because, I mean, it sounds like quite serious subject matter, although I'm sure it's really powerful. But then I just saw that actually the, the author, Paul Murray, um, he gave a quote for this book in which he just says, very, very funny. And uh, so I, I can only guess that this book is infused with a lot of humor and wit as well, um, which I have to say the Irish are particularly good at in their fiction or, or tend to be. Um, so yeah, I, I am really keen to read this new novel. And then the next book on their list is from Paul Murray himself with his novel, The Beasting, this great big family saga focusing on the different points of view of four members of a family as they're going through a really different difficult period as a family, but also as individuals. And I just found this to be such an absorbing read. Um, there are moments of great humor in it, uh, but also really tender moments. And each of the four different voices feel so convincing uh, on their own. And he uses different styles of narrative to tell their stories. Um, such a great novel. And I uh, had such a wonderful discussion about it when, with my online book group um, when this was one of our selections in September. Burnham Wood by Eleanor Catton uh, about a guerrilla gardening group in New Zealand and a plot of land uh, which they try to take over, but an investor um, has a special interest in this land. And we followed the different perspectives of a number of characters getting really deeply into each of their psychologies before the whole drama of this story comes together um, in a very climactic and uh, and surprising way. And so this has been appearing on a number of lists and Eleanor Catton is such a revered author. I, I did enjoy reading it. I'm glad I, I read it, um, but it's not my favorite book. Uh, I wasn't as good as the luminaries, uh, I personally, I don't think, uh, and but I, I know a lot of other readers have really loved this and appreciated it. Ordinary Human Failings by Megan Nolan, another book by an Irish author, and this novel takes place in London in the early 1990s and is nominally about a murder case and an Irish family which becomes entangled with this case and becomes um, sort of the scapegoats um, for the tabloid culture of the time. Uh, but I've read that it's really um, about this family's history and exploring their complicated relationships with each other, about struggles with alcoholism and addiction. And I would like to read this novel, although I still have Megan Nolan's um, first book called Acts of Desperation, which has just been sitting on my bookshelves um, ever since it came out and one that I've been wanting to get to. Absolutely and Forever by Rose Tremaine. Uh, this is a novel about a thwarted early love affair between two teenagers who really fall for each other, but events mean um, that they aren't ever able to get together in the way that they'd 
hoped to. And I had not heard that uh, Rose Tremaine has a new book out, um, but this sounds so good. Um, it's just under 200 pages, um, so it's quite a short novel. And uh, her novel, The Gustav Sonata, I loved so much. Uh, she also wrote a great short story collection called The American Lover, I think. Um, she's so good. The New Life by Tom Crew. This was the very first novel that I read this year, and it was such a great way to start my reading year, because uh, this, this novel is fantastic. It's a historical novel taking place um, at the very end of the 1800s and following um, two men, um, but really focusing on one who has been a uh, closeted homosexual all of his life. He has a wife and multiple children, and he meets a man and decides that he doesn't want to live a lie anymore. He wants to be with this man, but he also wants to create social change by writing a book, co-authoring a book, um, to let people know about what people's private sexual lives are really like and how um, that clashes with Victorian values and um, prevents people from living their authentic selves and their authentic lives. And uh, it's such an emotional and absorbing story, such an interesting like counter narrative to um, the, the Oscar Wilde trials, which were going on to um, and thinking during that time and thinking about how that really affected the lives of gay people at that time. Um, such a powerful debut novel. And a fun thing, um, I was at a, a book prize the other day, not the booker, but um, the Polari Prize. And uh, Tom Cruise was nominated for that award and he was there at the ceremony and I was too nervous to go up and say hello to him but I was there with Bob the Booker and he did go say hello and um, so I admire his bravery. The Ren the Ren by Anne Enright. Ireland Strikes Again. Yes, um, this is a novel uh, about three generations of Irish women, a uh, patriarchal figure that has kind of cast a shadow over their lives, um, who's a famous poet um, but who's quite dark domineering and so it sounds like such a good story um this has been on other uh, best books of the year lists um so much so when i was looking at a, a list of um that the other week um that while i was making that video i went out and got this copy of the book i've not read it yet but i'm so eager to because i love and then writes writing uh she's written so many great books um the the green road and uh and the actress and but i think my favorite novel of hers is the first Forgotten Waltz. I think that is an incredible novel about an affair and the mechanics of it, which gave such an interesting new perspective on it. And so, yeah, she is one of the best. Yellow Face by R.F. Kwan. This has been making some prize lists and, uh, and some readers' favorite books of the year, um, although it's been very divisive. Some other readers um, really haven't got on with this book. I do like the tagline for it, uh, that Athena Liu is a literary darling and June Hayward is literally nobody. Um, that's a great way of selling the, the book, but it's about two friends when one of them un unexpectedly dies. The other one with literary aspiration steals her unpublished manuscript publishes it as her own. And so it looks at issues um, to do with racism, to with diversity, with icky online culture. Um, it does sound interesting. I know, yeah, some people have loved it, but I've heard enough uh, opinions from people that I really trust that didn't enjoy this book. Um, that makes me think, no, I'm not going to read this uh, or not going to prioritize it. Kairos by Jenny Erpenbeck. This is a novel which takes place in East Germany in 1986 following a love affair between a younger woman and an older man and um, how their relationship becomes complicated by the politics of the time and uh, the trouble going on in the communist government and I've been wanting to read this so much because um, I loved Erpen Beck's novel Go Went Gone. Um, I think she's an incredible writer. Carrot by Adam Mars Jones. Uh, this novel is about a gay man living in Cambridge in the 1970s and about how he's trying to establish a life for himself there. And this is the third volume in a series that Adam Mars Jones is calling his semi-infinite novel. It is a very 
very long book. It is 750 pages. The first two books in the series were also very long books. Um, I've not read them, and they even say in their summary of this book in the, the newspaper, um, they begin by saying, this is niche, and there's no point in pretending otherwise. Um, so I, since I've not read any of those books, I'm not sure if I will read this next. Um, I, I'm sure they are wonderful. Um, they're meant to contain a lot of humor and great insight, uh, but it is a big reading project and one that I don't think I'm quite ready for yet. The Hero of This Book by Elizabeth McCracken. Um, this is a novel that I hadn't come across before, but it's about a woman whose mother has died. Um, they're from New England, um, but her mother loved London, and so she travels to London, and she's ruminating upon her life and her relationship with her mother and the connection um, that they have lost. And uh, this sounds so good to me. I'm not like multiple ways um, because I'm from New England and I live in London. So I'm interested in see how the author um, shows that insight. But also I've only read one book by her before. I think it was called Thunderstruck and other stories. And I loved that. So I've been really wanting to explore more of her work. Old God's Time by Sebastian Barry. Yes, another Irish author. And this is a novel that I just finished reading um, just uh, last week. Um, I know I'm late to this. I, it was on the Booker Prize long list and it just took me a while to finally get to it. But oh my gosh, it is so good. Sebastian Barry, it's such an incredible writer and with such humor and uh, and insight and poetic beauty. Um, this story about a older uh, retired man um, living on his own who was a policeman and uh, but how a case from the past resurfaces and um, he gets drawn back into it and his memories of the past start getting stirred but it's there's this whole ambiguity about what is real um, in his memories and what might he just have imagined what has he purposely forgotten um, it's so fascinating um, following this story and uh, so emotional I, I got completely wrapped up in it. Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. This is the second novel on this list that has a strong Shakespearean theme at the center of the book and that's because uh, it's about a theater company made up of Israelis and Palestinians who are trying to put on a production of Hamlet and the West Bank and so um, it's about uh, the of course it's about the the politics and and the conflict of this area, but it's also a youthful drama um, following the story of a woman who has been living in England, um, who's from this area, but returns there to join this theatre company and to play Gertrude in this production. I think it sounds so fascinating. I need to go out and get a copy of this book. I'm not going to do it right now, but I, I will um, in the next couple of weeks. The Wide World by Pierre Lamatre, and it's translated by Frank Wynne. And this is a story of about a family, uh, well-to-do, but a not-so-nice family in France um, in the mid-1900s, following them over a number of decades and how the patriarch of this family is trying to decide which of his sons he wants to leave the family business to. Um, it's meant to be the first in a trilogy, and the book has been described or likened uh, to Balzac, and I love reading Balzac's fiction, so I think I could really get into to this. Victory City by Salman Rushdie. This is a novel about an ancient kingdom, an ancient city, and a woman who is visited by a goddess and imbued with certain powers, and she lives for 250 years. Um, it sounds really fantastical and interesting, but I have to admit, I've never really got on with Rushdie's fiction, and I've just, I like, I've liked the ideas of the stories that he writes, but then once I start reading them, I'm like, I'm not so into this. And I almost feel guilty about it, which I know I shouldn't. But, you know, about after the, the horrific attack on Salman Rushdie, which is, of course, is is absolutely horrible. Uh, but I, I can't help it. I just haven't enjoyed any of his books that... I've tried reading or even when I've read them in their entirety. And really interestingly, he has a memoir coming out next year, which is about the attack upon him, which is called Knife. 
The Fraud by Zadie Smith, a novel which has been making a lot of these best books of the year lists, and I think deservedly so. Uh, it's such a fascinating story. There's there's a lot going on in this book, uh, but I think it's so interesting. Um, a lot of the individual elements of the story, but also the larger themes of it and how they all come together. And it centers around a famous case of the mid uh, 1800s in England uh, about a man who claimed to be an heir to a fortune, or he might have been a fraud. And a woman, um, it's told, narrated from the point of view of a woman named Eliza, who uh, is following this case, becomes very interested in it, but is also an abolitionist and um, becomes interested in the end of slavery in Jamaica. And uh, a man who um, was born into slavery there and becomes an integral witness in this case. Um, yeah, such an interesting novel. And I, I understand some readers have uh, like uh, um, commented that they appreciate Zadie Smith's nonfiction more than her fiction, but I think her fiction contains so many fascinating ideas. The Happy Couple by Nisha Dolan, another Irish novelist on the list and another book that I hadn't heard of before coming to this list and I so want to read it now because I had read Nisha Dolan's debut novel called Exciting Times which was excellent. It's such a funny take on modern relationships and uh, this story sounds like it follows a similar theme um, in, in that it's about a, a couple who are planning to get married and three people who are connected to them um, that might prevent them um, from actually getting married. So it's, I think, exploring this issue of like modern in modern relationships of like, well, is marriage still something that we need to be doing? And uh, yeah, it's, it just sounds so good. Now, those are all the books in their fiction list of the best books of the year, but they also have categories for different genres, uh, including science fiction. And uh, one book I want to highlight from that, um, because I love it so much and I'm always happy to talk about it, is In Ascension by Martin McInnes. And uh, this novel um, is science fiction um, because it's, um, uh, it involves a spaceship, but also um, it's such a powerful story of an individual's life who is trying to find her meaning uh, in the world, the meaning of existence, but also meditating on her past and the complicated memories she has about her um, her family history. Um, she had a very difficult relationship with her father and we follow her um, as she becomes so entranced by the wonders of the world, of uh, the mysteries at the bottom of the ocean, but also in the furthest reaches of outer space. And we follow her on these journeys. It's a really epic journey, um, but also so psychologically insightful that I think it's just incredible. And I'm really gutted when I was at the Booker Prize um, the, the other week. Apparently, Martin Martin McInnes was there, but I, I never saw him. And I, I would have loved the chance to say hello to him in person since I interviewed him over Zoom about this book um, towards the end of the summer. And finally, I just wanted to point out in the historical fiction category, um, they've listed the novel Cuddy by Benjamin Myers, which I'm actually reading right now. Um, it's a really epic story uh, about um, the life of St. Cuthbert, um, who's the unofficial um, patron saint of the north of England. And uh, so it follows his story, but then also people connected to him and um, the, the kind of sect or cults that like became his following um, after he was canonized as a, a saint and it centers around a cathedral in the, the north of England and the lives of people um, connected with this over many centuries and following um, their lives and yeah and this story and Benjamin Ryer Myers is um, such a great writer um, he writes about like the natural world in such a poetic and powerful way um, but also um, yeah, people in society who get kind of marginalized and pushed to the side and yeah, how he invokes their stories um, with with um, great warmth and humor, um, I think is so wonderful. So that is what I'm reading right now. But I do want to get to some of these other books on the list. I'd love to know what you think of this list and uh, any of the individual titles on here, if you would recommend I read them or don't, um, or if you're interested in reading any of them now, please let me know in the comments below. But I hope you're doing well and reading good things and I'll speak to you again soon.
Bye-bye.